Hey everyone, hi. Welcome or welcome back to my channel. I'm Shelly and today I'm going to be talking you through my nonfiction pile of possibilities or my nonfiction TBR to be read, though I don't think I will actually get to all of these books. Um, and I'm going to be doing it a little bit differently. So if you are new here, then hi, I'm Shelly and I love books and reading and Nonfiction November is hands down my favorite booktube event uh, here on the internet. <laughs> um, and if you don't know what Nonfiction November is, it is where we readers celebrate nonfiction and all that its juiciness can give us. Um, I am just thrilled. Uh, Olive at a book, Olive runs this event. And what she does is that she picks four one word prompts that are very interpretable. Um, and she, those are the prompts that we can use to um, fulfill our TBR. I don't know where I was going with that. <laughs> the prompts are very malleable. malleable? Anyways, words, I can, I can tell I'm excited when I start stumbling over my words. So the, there are four one word prompts and basically what happened was is that last year my sweet friend Elizabeth at Bukins and Books, she took all of her piles, pile of possibilities and fit them into the four one word prompts. Um, she fit them into one of the prompts and um, I just loved it. It was such a great video. I will leave her channel and that video link down below and that is what I'm inspired to do today. But I don't even know what the prompts are so I'm going to watch Olive's announcement video and figure out what the prompts are and then we will be off to the races with my huge pile of possibilities. Of Ooh, she's calling them one word challenges. Okay, record, element, border, and secret. All right. <laughs> All right, record, element, border and secret. Okay, give me a moment. Okay, record, element, border and secret. Record, element, border and secret. Okay. Um hmm. Okay, I'm going to start with secret, but I because I think that that I see two books immediately that go with that and that is Okay, so I feel like there's gonna be a lot of like moving things around, but you know what? It's okay, it's okay, we got this. So record, element, border, and secret. The two, first two I have is reading, Lo reading Lolita in Tehran, a memoir in books, which is by Azir Nafisi. And what I imagine that this is about and what I believe it, it is about is that the women are actually not allowed to read certain books um, in Tehran. And so they have to keep their reading a secret um, and what they get from reading these books that are done in secret. We also have uh, Svetlana Alexevich's The Unwomanly Face of War, which is an oral history of women in World War II. And I imagine that, well, this is uh, oral accounts of women who fought in World War II that was kept a secret from public documents. We don't really think about the women that fought in World War II. Um, and now uh, Svetlana Alexevich brings that secret to the public face and to history through her books of, of writing. And um, it starts out as oral histories, but now they're in documents like this, a bound up book. Actually, this one would work really well as a record because it's a record of these women's oral histories as they fought in World War II. And I'm gonna run with the word record. Um, so we have, these two books that I often think of together, gracious, and it is The Autobiography of a Face by Lucy Greeley, who um, I believe had some sort of cancer. She had some sickness that left her face um, abnormal, misshapen. And I know that she uh, recollects on that experience. She's a poet and she uses um, her life to, to think about what it's like to be different from others. So this is a record of her life and then following that we have Anne Patchett's Truth and Beauty which is a record of her friendship with Lucy Greeley so um, yeah two books there and then again kind of going with record oh one second 
Okay, so again, for record, I think this fits it the most, <laughs> the most poignantly, and that is Man's Search for Meaning by Victor, Victor E. Frankel, who actually kept a diary, a record of him, of his life during, during his time in the concentration camps as a prisoner, um, a Jewish prisoner during World War II. And I know that it becomes more of a meta thing, it becomes more of a philosophical thing, in that he wonders if he if he doesn't have the the piece of papers recording that he existed, then when he dies, did he actually exist? And it becomes a, a, a philosophical journey um, about what does it mean to live a life and what does it mean to have a life. Um, that's what I know about this book. I haven't read it yet, but I think that it probably most closely fits to the word record. I also have The War, which is Marguerite Duras, who is more known for her book The Lover, um, but it's her diary or her journal entries um, when she was living in France during uh, 1944. So again, World War II and a record of her, to her life during that time period. So we have a lot of that. So I think a lot of memoirs would fit under record. Let's see what else I can get to. Hmm, hmm, hmm. Record, what is it? Record, element, border, and secret. Okay, border. <laughs> I have a couple for border. Um, I think of border as like a, a boundary, like that it, it shows the boundary of something. So I would like to think about maybe crossing our mental border hmm, <laughs> between insects and people, um, or what we, maybe breaking the borders of my own thinking in regards to insects. Um, so I have Extraordinary Insects, and this is by Anne Steerdops Thigason, and it is translated actually by Lucy, Mo Lucy Moffat. Ah, I forgot to say, The War by Marguerite Duras is a translated book as well. And this was tra translated by Barbara Bray. Oh, I have another translated. Oh my gosh, all these books are translated. Um, Svetlana Alexievich's book is also a translated work, and it is translated by Richard Piver and Larissa Volkanhosky. Volkanhosky. So another translated work. All right, let's see what else. Ooh, I have a I have a book that actually has I have a book that actually has secret in the title. So let me get that out. All right, I have Secret Forms, The Endless World. The, I have Endless Forms, The Secret World of Wasps. So going into a world that we are have un, are unknown to us humans and you need to uncover something that is like secret to us. So I like that. Okay, another one for border would be, oh gracious. Um, a naturalist buys an old farm. And this is, um, so this is by Edwin Way Teal. Teal was uh, known for writing in more of a global way, like his writing spans um, his travels to many areas and going all here, there, and everywhere. And what was interesting was that when I was reading about this book, this is his time um, in a in a in a boundary. Um, so he has the borders of his farm, and he stays within those borders, and writes about his time living only in that boundary, living on an old farm. So yeah, so I think of that with as a border <laughs> around his life and a parameter on his writing. I think that Lab Girl by Hope Jaren, I think she's going to explain some elements of science because she is a scientist and, um, and explain those elements to us readers in her memoir, Lab Girl. Oh gracious, okay. Ooh, another one for secret. Okay, so the Proud Boys and the White Ethno State, how the alt-right is warping the ima uh, American imagination. In this book, um, Alexandria Ministern, she talks about the origins of the alt-right um, sort of fascism that has sprung up or seemingly sprung up. Um, over the last several years um, and she talks about its origins which to me was very like um, secretive and actually it's done quite a bit on the on the internet and in sort of secret pockets of uh, the internet so yeah secret okay another one for record would be um, the little virtues by Natalie Ginsburg and this is translated by one moment 
This is translated by Dick Davis, and this is um, her record of, um, these are essays uh, recording her time living through World War II and its brutalities. And, um, and she is an Italian writer who was living through World War II, which actually fits in with, with what I'm reading right now, which is M, Son of the Century. That is not a nonfiction book, but it is amazing. And it is by Antonio Scarati. But anyway, so I've been thinking about this book because it is also another writer, but this time she is living in Italy during World War II. And these are essays reflecting on that time. Okay, elements could also be one of the elements like earth, fire, water, air. And so I'm going to use that as um, this memoir is talks about a woman who takes her children out into the elements. Um, and it's called The Curve of Time and it's by W. Wiley Blanche and or Blanche. And she decides to take her children and go live out in nature. And so she's going to live out in the elements. Um, also going along that theme is Fox and I, An Uncommon Friendship by Catherine Raven. And Catherine kind of does the same thing. She gets fed up with life um, among other humans and she's, she's just done with it. And so she takes herself um, out into the elements and <laughs> lives out in the middle of nature in order to um, kind of recharge, uh, reconnect with herself. And there she makes uh, friends essentially with a fox. Um, that's my knowledge of the book. Ooh, if we're going with elements, then this has one of the four elements on it, earth, fire, water, air, and that is Prairie Fires by um, Caroline Frazier. And this is um, Laura Ingalls Wilder. Uh, this is her biography and it's the American dreams of Laura Ingalls Wilder who wrote Little House on the Prairie and that entire series. My nose itches like something fierce today and I have no idea why, but you know what? It's okay because it's nonfiction November day, y'all. I'm just so excited. Okay, we're gonna go with Back to the Elements um, and I'm going to say, ooh, um, Gavin Maxwell, The Ring of Bright Water. <laughs> so I imagine that there will be some elements in there considering that the word water, which is one of the elements of uh, the, the atmosphere um, is on the title, which is about the friendship between a young boy and an otter. Border can of often mean um, on the edge of something. So I'm going to say that Close to Knives is um, David, what is it? A memoir of disintegration. So he's on the border of his own mental health and um, Close to Knives, so he's on the border to the knives, whatever that might mean. And this is David Wajarowski's um, memoir. So interesting. We'll see how many borders he crosses with this memoir. Let's see. Oh, I wanted to say Julia Child, my life in France. She learns the secret <laughs> to French cooking. Mrs. Jack, this is the biography of Isabel Stewart Gardner, who was a Bostonian socialite, um, according to what I know about her. And this is a record of her life. Ooh, another one for border would be the, the Romanovs, the final chapter uh, by Robert K. Massey. I read a Robert K. Massey book last year. It was Catherine the Great, which was amazing, um, which is all about the Tsaress, um, the last Tsaress actually in Russia. And she was, she was amazing. Um, and this is going to be drawing a border around the Romanovs. So closing the chapter, the end of that lineage. Um, and he records that here. So there we go. Okay, let's see if I can finish out the books that I have left. I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, um, I'm gonna say Secret, um, Ages for Hawk by Helen McDonald. She has a secret knowledge of hawks that at least I don't know, and I'm hoping she'll share those secrets with me. This is a an, an exclusive love, a memoir. This is by Johanna Ajordan, <laughs> which is about her grandparents, the author's grandparents who lived through the Holocaust. And it was about their undying love for each other, so much so that I believe they took their own lives at the same point in time. And I think she's exploring that secret. Ooh, um, Ex Libris, uh, which is something I wanted to 
um, read during Shorty September and I didn't get to it. So hopefully nonfiction November, I will get to this. And it's confessions. They're confessing, they're confessing a secret. <laughs> a secret of a common reader but it's confessions of a common reader but you don't need to confess something unless it's a secret already um and that is by Anne Fadiman Ooh, um home to india by santa ramo Ra rao um and this is a record um of the author's time living in india so very interesting um, let me see if I could, okay, An American Childhood by Annie Dillard. I believe she breaks the borders of what, um, a memoir is with this book. She has a different approach to memoirs, at least in her writing style. And I'm going to say that she breaks the bounds, the borders of writing, <laughs> uh, with this book that I actually don't know until I actually get in here. Okay, again, another record of somebody's life, and this is Dear Friend from My Life I Write to You by Yan Yan Li. Um, and again, it sort of has that recording um, concept in that she, it's Dear Friend, which is the concept of like writing something down, keeping a record of something. And so the title is tipping me off that this is a record of a, a certain time in her life and being thoughtful about it. We are going back to the elements outdoors to discover the secret lives of um, creatures that I know nothing about. And so that would be <laughs> The Birds of Heaven. Um, and this is by Peter Mathis Matheson. Um, and this is just travel Travels with Cranes. I believe it's his um, record of his travels and thinking about birds during that time. And then The Soul of an Octopus, which is discovering and revealing the intellect, which is supposed to be incredible, of octo octopi? Um, I'm not really sure actually, uh, the plural of octopus, maybe it's octopus, I really don't know. Um, but exploring the intellect of these fascinating and creatures that were unknown to me. Secret to me, possibly. <laughs> okay, and then let's see, I have two more. Um, oh, this has secret on the title, who knew? So this is Mistress of the Vatican, the true story of o Olympia. Um, I'm, I'm just not going to try with it. Ma Maldal, Maldalcini? Maldalcini? Maldal 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 Is that right? The Secret Female Pope. So, okay, that title right there. Mm, why did I miss this? Probably because on the spine it doesn't say it. And then finally... Ooh, okay, so then I have In the Land of Men by Adrian Miller. This is um, this David Foster Wallace, who is a writer that I really enjoy. Um, this was his girlfriend uh, during part of his life. He's no longer living. Um, and she tries to uncover the secrets of manhood and male writing. Um, and she does that in this book. So uh, yeah, that's it. Okay, well, <laughs> that was really exciting. I love this. It took me a minute. I had to think about words in different ways that I wouldn't have thought about them. Might have been a stretch for some of these, although I think all of them could be like records. All of these books are technically records of whatever they're keeping, whatever they're telling you. Um, yeah, and I'm excited. So who knows, this video is probably a crazy mess, but it's all right. Tell me, what are you reading for Nonfiction November? Are you participating? Um, what prompt got you the most excited? I love secret and record. I don't know why, I just love those. Border and element were definitely harder for me. I'd be like, hmm. <laughs> Anyhow, I'm going to say thanks to Elizabeth for giving me this idea um, and letting me riff on her idea. Um, again, I will leave her channel link down below. And yeah, that's it for me. So thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for being here. And I will see you all in my next one. Bye, guys.